Hello! Bloody hell, that thing really was huge, wasn't it? Anyway, it's Atari Lynx time again, where we'll be looking at the games. Well, emulated versions of the games, because filming the screen is not the best for clarity. And that is so far the biggest understatement of 2017. Right, um, just to uh, headline here, we'll only be going through the original releases, um, so none of the uh, homebrew stuff or the later telegame stuff, just the things that you would have bought in the shops back when the Atari Lynx was a thing. Also, I've already mentioned Blue Lightning, so we won't be going through Blue Lightning again. And these aren't like a list of the very best games or the very worst games or anything like that. We're going to go through a good game and then a bad game till we've done ten of them. Ooh, also, I made a massive error in the last video by saying that the Comlinx cable that enabled you to connect Lynxes up to each other for multiplayer shenanigans enabled up to 18 Lynxes to be connected, which makes no sense. It's not a power of two. It is, of course, 16. I said the wrong number. Although no games actually enabled more than eight Lynxes to be connected at any one time. And in fact, only one game went that high, and it was Todd's Adventures in Slime World. What a name. Many thanks to Kieran Hawken for telling me that, because I didn't bloody know, like... Anyway, it's time for Good Game, Bad Game! Chip's Challenge. A superb puzzle game where you control a little guy called Chip who has to pick up all the microchips on a level, solving brain teasers based around keys, tile types, monsters and mazes. There are 148 levels, so it'll keep you coming back for ages. Many people will remember Chip's Challenge from a couple of Microsoft Entertainment packs back in the day, but the Atari Lynx version is the original. Kung Food. This has nice cartoony graphics and the controls are fairly tight, and that's about all the positive things I have to say about Kung Food. You play a tiny mutant scientist who is trapped in a kitchen, and you have to fight your way through loads of mutated food and insects and other such crap. It's an extremely dull side-scrolling beat-em-up where you can't tell if you're going to hit the enemy most of the time. It is awful. Also, the music sounds almost like random notes strung together. Rampart, an unusual action strategy game where you have to blow the crap out of invading boats with a slew of cannons, then rebuild your castle using a set of Tetris-style pieces. Gameplay comes in short, frenetic bursts, and it's really good fun. It was originally an arcade game, and it was ported to loads of different systems, and it's worth seeking out if you've never played it. World Class Soccer, also sold as World Class Football. Look at it. Look at it. Just look at it. Jerky, almost unplayable mess that doesn't even stick to the rules of football properly. The European Soccer Challenge is a hundred times better if you really want a football game for your links. Clax. It may not have had Tetris, but the Lynx did have the action puzzler Clax, where you need to fit a load of multicoloured Pez candy into lines. It's incredibly good fun, still stands up well, and for my money is much better than Sega's Columns. And although it's overlooked and generally unloved, some people do care about Clax. Hus. Batman Returns. A horrible, repetitive, frustrating mess of a movie tie-in. Batman has very few moves, there's not even a jump attack, and you're constantly taking cheap hits that you can't see coming. It's insanely difficult and unrewarding, and was inexplicably bundled with the Lynx 2 for a while. Great work there, Atari. Stun Runner. I am still amazed by this Lynx conversion. Stun Runner was a big flashy arcade machine where you race a futuristic hover thing around various tracks, and while it's far from being the best game on the system, the fact that this runs as fast and smooth as it does is still astonishing. And it's a good laugh to play. Dirty Larry Renegade Cop. An incredibly simple scrolling beat-em-up come shooter that is tedious beyond belief. You just scroll left to right, killing the same few enemies over and over and over. You'll have seen everything the game has to offer in a couple of plays. Distressingly poor. Xenophobe. 
Another arcade conversion and another bloody good one. In fact, it's better than the original arcade machine, mostly due to having improved controls. Xenophobe is an exploration shooter where you have to kill all the aliens in a series of different outer space related locations. There's a large range of characters that act as extra lives, you can connect up to four Linkses together for multiplayer larks, the graphics are bright and cartoony, there are loads of weapons and items to pick up and look, it's, it's just really bloody good, alright? Gordo 106. A nasty, fiddly mess of a platform game, Gordo 106 as you're attempting to control an escaping lab monkey through various messy and badly defined levels. It's very hard to make the foreground out from the background, and pretty much no fun to play whatsoever. Ah, and that's your lot on the old Atari Lynx there that we'll be covering. Quite sad that it's over because I'm a big fan of the old Atari Lynx and was really looking forward to doing the videos and so I kept putting them off because once you've done them, they're in the past. That's the way linear time works. So let's talk about some other good games that came out for it while I think. Uh, Pac-Land, really good conversion of the arcade machine which is like a weird um, platformer where you play Pac-Man and he's got a little hat on and a fairy lives in his brain or something. It's a very strange game but really, really good conversion of that. Uh, there's Todd's Adventures in Slime World, mentioned that earlier, um, which it never quite clicked with me, but was uh, very popular with a lot of people. It's got a terrible title, Todd's Adventures in Slime World, and looks really bland and boring, because all the backgrounds just like this sort of green, slimy, nothingy. But actually, pretty good game. Um, quite a lot of fun. Um, got a bit of a Metroidvania thing going on. Uh, lots of lots of weapons in it, if I remember as well. There's Toki, really good uh, conversion of the arcade machine Toki, which has uh, some sort of bloke who's been turned into a little spitting monkey who has to go off and rescue a lady from an evil wizard, or something, or others. Um, it's, yeah, decent game, excellent conversion. A uh, really good conversion of Rampage as well, actually. The old grab hold of a building and punch holes in it and eat the people and eventually the building falls down then you go on to the next level a thon um yeah i really enjoyed rampage back in the day and that's a great conversion of the links again yet another good arcade conversion actually is uh zybots um and oh what's that flight a world war one flight simulator game called warbirds which is well i say flight simulator it's more a dog fighting simulator really but really good fun when i say dog fighting i mean like planes fighting in the air dog fighting not like you have dogs and make them fight that would not be such a good concept for a game but yeah world war one um flight simmy stuff good laugh so there we go that was the mighty atari lynx uh sold about three million units worldwide so the next time you see it in one of those lists saying oh biggest gaming flops ever lol lol click you won't believe number seven um, tell them to shove it up their ass because it sold 3 million units worldwide. That's quite a lot. Um, sadly, under a third of what the bloody Game Gear sold. Um, that was about 10.5 million, um, which I think is kind of tragic because the Game Gear was inferior to the Lynx on pretty much all levels. The screen wasn't as good, the battery life wasn't as good, it wasn't anywhere near as powerful. But it had many, many more games um, and obviously Sega behind it, so. There we go, it was a much more popular thing. And I mean, Nintendo's Game Boy sold like 120 million or something. So anyway, if you get the chance to get hold of a Lynx at a decent price with a few games, I would recommend you get it, because it's an interesting machine, and it does stuff which, well, was amazing at the time, and has a few little quirks that you don't really see anywhere else. Subscribe for more.